AMD finally releases their competitor for NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling. We get space detergent and some of your favorite AMD cards are going bye-bye. Let's talk about the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet, starting off with the launch of AMD's FSR, also known as Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is their hotly anticipated feature that they're gonna be rolling out to many games that's supposed to give you better frame rate for little image loss whenever you're running it on the various games. A lot of tech press were able to get their hands on it, test it, and see how how does it work? And for the most part, the reception to it does seem to be positive. We'll leave links in the video description for you to check out the deep dives that everybody else has gone through, but essentially it comes down to, especially if you run it in quality or ultra quality modes, you have little visual loss for some frame rate gain up to the tune of 25% in some instances. However, as you go down in native resolution below 4K, you start to see visual loss creeping up more heavily, even if you are using those quality settings. So it doesn't appear to be as bad as NVIDIA's first iteration of DLSS, which was just Vaseline smeared all over the monitor. And then they expect you to lick it up afterwards in order to play games that actually you can see. Even the worst looking visuals on this essentially just makes it look like it's pixelated rather than it's smeary, which is the word that I just don't like. <laughs> one of the things that Hardware Canucks mentioned, which I really appreciated, check their review of this out in the link in the video description, was that in order to get the frame rate to match FSR versus non-FSR, you actually have to reduce the settings of the game down quite heavily in order to get the frame rates to match. And that's kind of the big advantage of FSR. Number one, that it's being rolled out to not just AMD GPUs, but also potentially Intel's GPUs and Nvidia's GPUs, and that it'll work on whatever game game developers actually want to program it in for, and thereby you can get minimal quality loss, but also getting that extra frame rate. And it makes it so that you don't have to drop the actual in-game settings. So you could have things like ray tracing enabled on the RX 5700 XT in games that otherwise couldn't do it. And you get that added visual bump from that. The big issue with FSR is obviously the game lineup at this point. You can see here, these are the games that currently support it, which most of these are not majorly popular AAA titles. I believe it was Steve from Gamers Nexus who mentioned that Terminator Resistance had 26 people playing it when they were testing out FSR, if that tells you anything of these titles. Godfall, obviously the big showcase title for AMD, but not really hitting home as something that everybody's talking about. The future list of titles that are coming soon also look really promising for Spoken, really excited about that. Resident Evil Village, as well as Far Cry 6. Those are some big titles, but obviously you can't trust a technology based on the fact of its future promises. However, considering the fact that this is free, that makes it a little bit more palatable. AMD's not asking you to pony up any cash in order to do this. So if they can implement it in any of these, that's going to be a boon for gamers everywhere. What do you think of AMD's FSR? Let me know down below in the comments. Does this get you excited? Are you going to use it on some of your products that you have, especially if you're running things like integrated graphics or an APU? Is that something that you're gonna be looking to? Speaking of games that nobody's playing and nobody's talking about, we've got to talk about Marvel's Avengers because they made an oopsie. They patched their game so that it displayed people's IP address in the game so that if people were streaming it, which is all 14 people who want to be major disappointments to their parents, they got their IP address exposed on stream. As you can see right here down at the bottom, it was cut out for Twitter, but exposing people's IP address, especially streamers, this is a problem because then it can actually help to geolocate them and make it so that they can get doxxed or even swatted, which is a rampant problem in the streamer industry. It's not necessarily necessarily a problem personally if you see your IP address, but if somebody's broadcasting this out into the world, that's obviously where you're gonna run into issues. But hey, any news is good news. Any press is good press. Marvel's Avengers is back in the news, guys. Yay! And what's also in the news was the crypto crash. Did you hear? It's time for crypto stunts. <laughs> Bitcoin, just, it was dead. It crashed below 30,000 at one point being down to nearly $28,000. It was awful, but now it's back up. It's down 0.7% on the day. It had a really rough crash, but then people decided, hey, no, 
let's buy Bitcoin again. And so they did. Ethereum, however, down 2.8% on the day, also suffering from that major crash down to 1730, still below $2,000. Dogecoin suffering even more. Had a first flash crash yesterday that brought it down to 16 cents. With that other crash that took place today, brought it back down to 16 cents again, but down 9% on the day as of the time of recording to just below 19 cents. Meme stocks, however, having a good old time, my friends. It's a good day for them. GameStop almost up 9.6%. This is after GameStop announced that they sold some shares at retail, which likely helped to drive the price down earlier in the week. But this means that GameStop raised over a billion dollars by just issuing shares at the current retail rate. So GameStop at 220. AMC up 4.6% on the day to 58.26 and BlackBerry up 4.7% to $13.40. Meme stocks having a good crypto driving people mad and what could also drive you around and then mine for you is this upcoming car from Daymac. The Spiritus is going to mine for you when you leave it plugged in at home. There's not a ton of details around this. It's an $18,000 three wheel car that's electric, which this just shouts gimmick and not like it's actually going to really do much for you. But you can mine using one of two apps, the Nebula Miner software or something else. But we don't know the actual performance of the computer computer that's on board this car and considering it costs 18 grand I'm gonna guess it's not very good. I think if we can see something like the Tesla Model S and X, which have a 10 teraflop GPU baked into it, if we could see those somehow hacked to start mining, you could get actually get some decent returns out of that. But something like this, I wouldn't hold my breath. Just seems like a gimmick for mining. Reminds me very much of the Long Blockchain Corporation, previously Long Island Ice Tea, who changed his name back in 2017 just to get the crypto hype surrounding them. But Epic Games trying to get some more hype surrounding them by giving out services for free. They're allowing game developers to implement not only voice chat, which will use Epic Games backend server, but also easy anti-cheat, which will allow them to implement that into their game, which used to be something that they offered, but now are offering for free on their Epic online services, especially if you want to bake it into an Unreal real engine game and in case you want to bake pies I don't know how this game works I've never played miss which is probably going to sound sound terrible to a lot of older folk who have played this game but the remake is coming out to PC and Mac later this year it's been on the Oculus Quest platform but now actually coming to people who uh, don't want to have to sell their souls to Facebook but astronauts about to sell their soul to Tide because they're going to be the first people to eat Tide Pods in space because Tide is developing the first laundry detergent for space use by being completely degradable, especially in a closed loop water system, which is gonna be really neat, especially if Tide can take this and not just make it for astronauts, but bring it here down back on Earth and make something that's actually fully environmentally degradable for laundry detergent for regular humans. That'd be dope. Space, while it's all about sending people up there, we've also seen a lot of technological advancements trickle down over the years as it's happened, which this is the biggest technological advancement I could ever talk to you about on Hot News, okay, my friends? You need to listen and listen close, okay? This is the best thing that I'm talking about today. HP has announced new monitors that are Zoom certified and Chromebook certified. How's that possible, you ask? Well, uh, one of the monitors has a five megapixel webcam, which is pretty neat. That's baked into the monitor. It makes it so that you have Windows Hello support, which is actually kind of cool. But then the Chromebook one is just that it can plug in to Chromebooks and it'll work seamlessly with Chromebooks. Good job, HP. Love, love the marketing. And I loved my R9 270X. It's the first GPU that I ever did a video with on YouTube. You can see the first UFD tech video right there. Check out that R9 270X. Well, it is no longer getting driver support from AMD alongside several other cards, such as the HD 7000 series, the R300 series, and the R9 Fury. Those are being discontinued as well as previous APUs that were before Ryzen. You see the full list of GPUs that AMD is no longer gonna support on the screen right now. And if you're running one of these older ones, maybe it's time to upgrade. I don't know. The market's bad. I, I can't really tell you to do that. All I can say is that you, you're just not going to get support moving forward. But I'm going to move forward to tomorrow's episode of Hot News, which I'll see you there. And in case you want to know about how GP prices are falling, you check out yesterday's episode right over there. Cheers. Cheers.